From Star Wars to 1970s TV shows, the promise of a bionic limb has long been the stuff of science fiction. But now it's getting real. Christina Quinn introduces us to a woman from Bedford, New Hampshire, who's helping local researchers perfect the technology. Morgan Stickney approaches physical therapy at Spalding Rehab like everything in life with her eyes on the prize. I like to treat PT and OT as if it's a workout, um, so I go down there and give it my all. She's a pre-med student, an elite swimmer, and a one-time Olympic hopeful, even though she spent years barely able to walk. It all started when she injured her left foot in the eighth grade. She endured multiple surgeries that only perpetuated the pain, resulting in a dependence on painkillers. I was in college and I was a pre-med student trying to take my classes on opioids. Um, because I was suffering in so much pain, all my bones and my feet were dying, and so um, I was doing that, and I, swimming was actually on hold um, because my health was just deteriorating. What remained unclear was why her bones were dying, but one thing was certain. Stickney knew she couldn't keep living like this. I couldn't walk. I hadn't walked in two years. Then she learned she was a candidate for an experimental surgery at Brigham and Women's Hospital. It's the Ewing amputation. Named after Jim Ewing, the first patient to undergo it, this procedure reconnects the muscles and nerves that communicate with the brain. It's a major advancement compared to a standard amputation, which severs these connections, says surgeon Matthew Carty. So when a patient with a standard amputation thinks about moving their ankle, which is no longer there, for example, they only get half the information. And so the brain searches for a way to process that incomplete equation. The Ewing amputation closes the loop. So when an amputee puts on a prosthetic limb, the brain knows exactly where that leg is because the muscles and nerves are still intact. And the idea is that once they've healed, when they fire those muscles and think about moving their ankle, their body basically thinks it's moving a biological ankle still. Cardi is working with researchers at the MIT Media Lab who are developing what is essentially a bionic leg. And Stickney, who underwent a Ewing amputation a year and a half ago, is among the first to help MIT researchers test it out. She's moving a robotic ankle just by thinking about it. Is that okay? Yeah. It's a potential game changer for anyone who uses a prosthetic limb. But for Stickney, the immediate payoff of the surgery was being pain-free and returning to competitive swimming. Months after her amputation, Stickney won two national championships and was living in Colorado training for the 2020 Tokyo Paralympics. But in January of this year, the unthinkable happened. I was recovering in the cold tub and I got out and hopped three steps um, and my foot fractured. She had a bone infection in her right foot. This time, after seeing more than 20 doctors, she got a diagnosis. An extremely rare vascular disease where there was very little blood flow in her lower limbs, resulting in brittle bones. It explained all those years of pain. To know that I finally had a diagnosis um, and to know that there was actually something physically there. And it was like, no, there's actually a disease that's causing this. But it also meant having her right leg amputated. Last month, Stickney became the first person to undergo a bilateral Ewing amputation. She's part of a small but growing group of pioneers helping perfect this new technology. In the meantime, though, she's already thinking about getting back in the pool. Nothing will stop me from getting in the pool. My goal is to go to the 2024 Paralympic Games. Um, I'll be in a different classification this time, but that doesn't change anything. I'm going to be working just as hard in the pool, if not harder. Christina Quinn joins me. Science is unbelievable. Yeah. She is unbelievable. She really Told is. The story beautifully. Thanks. So she just had her second amputation. Yeah. She's already planning for the 2024 Olympic yes. Games. Yes, she was already. She was at Spalding Rehab already talking about the 24 Paralympics. And, you know, she's realistic. She says she's taking it day by day, but she's already thinking about it. Yeah. She is really unbelievable. She's extraordinary. So what's next for the Ewing amputation is what you call it. Yes. How many and who's paying for all this stuff? Great question. So there are so far only 20 people have undergone the Ewing amputation. Uh, the genesis of it actually stems back to the marathon bombings. From there, there was seed money um, through the Stepping Strong Trauma Innovation Center at really? Brigham and Women's Center. So that's really where it all started. And from there, um, you know, Cardi and his team at Brigham Wounds have gotten funding from the Department of Defense, and they're doing a lot of research. Um, he says it does take a certain type of person to go ahead with this procedure, you know, people who are adventurous I say. and skeptical. However, it's still cost prohibitive for someone like Mike Morgan. You know, she has a, a GoFundMe page right now. And so um, 
it does take, you know, there, there's a, a certain unique alloy there. So it's still experimental, MIT's Media Lab. W when yes. does this hit the market? Do they have any idea? At least five years from now. You know, they have to go through, you know, um, studies and FDA approval. But at least five years from now, um, maybe five to seven years, we can finally see these on the market. Great story. And again, you told it perfectly. It was Thanks, really Jim. great.